objects. You've learnt about variables and arrays. Imagine you have a game where there are lots of non-player characters, NPCs. You want to be able to store information about them, power, weapon, strength and damage for example. We could store this as lots of individual variables. NPC1 power, NPC1 weapon, like this. But one of the really great things about JavaScript is just how easy it is to create a data structure that stores data in just the way you like it. If you're new to programming then you won't understand just how useful this is. Trust me, it is. Instead of using four variables to store the data for each NPC, we can create an object that stores the variables in a single structure. Like this. We use curly braces and name value pairs. A name value pair is separated using a colon. Open index.html from the folder start lecture 2 underscore 6 to code along with this video. Let's create a function that will generate an object like this. It's a function so we use the function keyword. We'll call the function create mpc. The first thing we'll do is generate a power value. It's going to take a value between 0.5 and 1. So far in the course we've met the date object. Another vital object is the math object. This has many useful methods and we'll meet two of them as we create this function. The first method is random. This returns a pseudo random number between 0 and 1. The number could be any decimal value in this range. 0 0.1, 0 0.352, 0.85, that sort of thing. But we want a number in the range 0.5 to 1. So we multiply this value by 0.5. Now we have a number in the range 0 to 0.5. But that's still not what we want. We need to add 0.5 to move the range to 0.5 to 1. If this is confusing, imagine that math.random return 0.8. We multiply this by 0.5, now the value is 0.4. Then we add 0.5 to this to get 0.9. That's in the target range. What if math.random return 0.1? Again we multiply this by 0.5, getting 0.05. Then we add the 0.5 to get 0.55. Again, in the range 0.5 to 1. Math.random is a great method to use in games. Next we create an array of weapons. Then we select a weapon at random using this array. How do we do that? Well, if we use math.random times weapons.length, we'll get a value between 0 and weapons.length. Actually, we'll always be just less than weapons.length because math.random never returns 1. It can return 0.99999, but never 1. With math.random times weapons.length, we have a decimal value. But to select an item from an array, we need an integer value. We wrap the code inside another math method, floor. This returns the integer part of a decimal value. So math.floor 2.85 is 2. And math.floor 1.289 returns 1. Now we have a value that, depending on the return value of math.random, returns one of the integer values, not 1, 2, or 3. If the value is 0, then weapon will be set to sword. If it's 1, weapon will be pistol, 2 axe, and 3 spear. Can you set strength? We want a value in the range 1 to 3. Use math.random, a multiplier, and add a value. Pause the video now and give it a try. Yes, it will be math.random times 2 plus 1. Damage is even easier. We default it to 0. Creating an object from these values is just a case of entering curly braces, then listing them separated by commas. This is a shortcut to creating the name value pairs. 
we can create an array to hold our NPCs. Unsurprisingly, we'll call it NPCs. Then to add an NPC to the array, we use push with the function call in brackets. This is going to call the function createNPC, which returns an NPC object. This is pushed onto the end of the array. If we repeat this three times, we should have an array of NPCs. Save your work, go to the root of your Web Server for Chrome browser tab. Just press the back button until you get there. Now click on lecture2 underscore 6 start. Enter npcs.length and you'll get the response 3. Now enter npcs square bracket 0. If you press the little arrow you can see more clearly the four properties of the first npc in the array. If we're just interested in what weapon the first npc has we use npcs 0 dot weapon. Or to get the power value of the second NPC, we use NPCs1 dot power. Everything about each NPC is encapsulated in the single object. Just as we did with the string object, we use a dot to separate the object from the property. Later in this section you'll see how you can even add your own custom methods. Objects are a key feature of using the 3GS library. Let's look back on what you've learnt. First you discovered variables. Then you learnt about functions. You learnt how your code can branch in different directions using conditions. You learnt to keep lots of variables in a list using arrays. And now you know about keeping lots of variables together in an object. With arrays you access an individual item using an index value. And with an object you use a property name. Often in code you'll want to repeat a section of code several times. Like here where we repeated creating NPCs. Rather than just pasting the code three times like we did here, much better to use loops. And that's what we'll do in the next video. See you in a minute. This video comes from my Udemy course, The Beginner's Guide to 3D Web Game Development with 3GS. Get the full course by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.